Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking to Lucy from the boutique wedding company all about getting married in Spain. She does destination weddings in Andalusia region. She is a wonderful planner and a dear friend and mentor of mine. So you are in for an absolute treat. All of her details are in the description box down below, also pinned to the top comment. And this video is divided into sections so you can jump forward and skip ahead to the sections that are most interesting to you. But I hope that you stay for the entire conversation because it was a really, really interesting one. I learned so much about weddings in Spain. I hope it's hopeful to you. Let's dive in. So I'm joined here by the wonderful, my friend, my mentor, my guiding light in the wedding industry, Lucy Bennett. Thank you so much for coming onto the channel. It's such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Olivia, for having me here. I'm really, really excited to get into our discussion today. We're talking about Spain, but first let us know a little bit about the Boutique Wedding Co, what you do, how you do it and where you do it. So um, eight years ago, I gave up a career of 17 years working in London, living and working in London to come to Spain to start a new life and to create my own business. And having had wedding experience in the UK and lots and lots of planning and working strat strategy experience in my London life, we created the Boutique Wedding Co. And we, we created a brand that really was all about everything that we were passionate for. And that was hugely about quality, uh, bespoke, personalized service, and to create weddings that were unique and different, but could reflect every single couple that would come and work with us. Amazing. And whereabouts in Spain are you? Where do you best most operate? So we're based on the southwest coast of Spain, which is the Atlantic side, close to Cadiz. And we operate across the whole of Andalusia, so the southern part of Spain. Lovely, wonderful. Must be very warm in the summer, very sunny and lovely. Um, and so I'm already listing it, but why, why do you find that so many couples want to get married in the Andalusia region and in Spain in general? I think in Spain in general, essentially because of the weather from that one perspective, when it boils down to it and they're reviewing different areas, Andalusia has the best off the cost and the weather. So we have, it's, it's more cost efficient to get married here. And you've got this, if you go to the right areas, this fantastic authenticity, obviously not always the Costa del Sol is not always authentic, but if you come inland, you go to Ronda, to Jerez, to Seville, to Cadiz even, you know, very authentic, but the, we have 300 days of sunshine here a year so we've actually done weddings in December and had all of the daytime events outside so that's been... incredible that's unheard of in Portugal like it would just like pee it down with rain the entire time like it would be really 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 wet and horrible so that sounds wonderful that's really cool and why else would you personally recommend getting married in Spain well if you like culture um, and something a little bit different, then it's brilliant. The food, when it is authentic and good, is just so rich and, and lovely, and the wine is good quality. It's great value for money, so I wouldn't say it's actually much cheaper to get married in Spain than it is in the UK, mm -hmm. proportionately, but what you do get is a huge amount more for your money, a huge amount more. So clients are often trying to break down the costs and say, well, if we bring our own wine, would it be cheaper? But actually at the end of the day, it would be a waste of your time and no cheaper, it will cost you more because it's, it's almost like in the price of the food, the wine is just included. And it's like, whoa, the other incredible thing is obviously quality is, is number one, but the Spanish put quality of food above and beyond anything else. I mean, it's that Mediterranean culture that is so important. So if you were to have friends for dinner at your house in Spain and you didn't have enough food, it would be the most highly embarrassing thing ever. So what I find is that the Spanish caterers and cat Spanish companies do such incredible amounts of food so that nobody ever goes hungry. In fact, there's usually too much food, but, and it's really lovely and delicious and everyone feels satisfied, you know? 
That sounds awesome. It sounds really, really cool. And yeah, we have the same issue where it's like copious amounts of food that people from other countries, when they have a destination wedding here, they're just not used to it. Do you find that, that people are quite shocked by the amount of spread that you get (laughs) in Spain? One of the things that I see from so many of the Spanish um, caterers is like a list of 10 to 16 canapes. And then I see when we work with our English kind of there's English companies here you know and there's like three or four canapes and at times in those situations people are left feeling hungry but when we're working with the traditional authentic Spanish caterers there's never any chance of that happening you know it's it's really good oh that sounds fabulous and I love Spanish food it's just so simple and warming you know it's really homey and authentic and lovely um but let's talk about some things that are not so good because I like to be super juicy on this channel I'm really honest um what would you warn couples about getting married in Spain what's the not so great side One of the things that's quite funny about Spain and what I struggled with when I first came here was that people would say to me, we'll do it at midday. So I'd be like ready at 12 o'clock and I'd be like, let's do it then. Let's go. And then Jesus was like, what's wrong with you? Are you, why are you being mad English woman? Uh, Midday is in three hours time, like get a grip. And the reason it's a really weird thing, but midday in the UK is 12 because the sun is at its highest point at that point in in the UK. And in Spain, the sun's at its highest point at 3 p.m. So when I get clients who want a daytime wedding, they want to get married at one o'clock in June, July, August or September, they would be facing another. So imagine one o'clock, sun doesn't set till 9.55 10 o'clock at the latest point. So, you know, 21st of June kind of thing. So they would have like eight hours in the sunlight. We would have ambulances (laughs) coming to take people to hospital with stroke. (laughs) So you have to get married much later here. And that for most people, well, not for most people, for some people is a disadvantage. For those who are very much into the Spanish culture and they're like, I come and I get in the mood and I take a siesta and I eat lunch at 3 p.m. instead of one o'clock. And, you know, they live like a life like a Spaniard. They have dinner at 9 p.m. because they're on holiday and they're just loving it. So for those people, it's no problem. But for people who are English or or Irish or American and they want to come here and they want to have a wedding exactly like they'd have at home, they're going to be struggling and their, their guests will be struggling with the heat. Yeah, no, I completely, completely agree. That made me cringe the idea of like a, a 12 noon ceremony at all. No, terrible. But you're right. Like if you're used to having your dinner at like six o'clock, then it's a bit of an adjustment to have your ceremony so late and then to have your dinner so late. So yeah, no, that is a great point to raise that people need to be well aware that the timings are different. We're working on Spanish time. Do as the Spanish do when you're in Spain. (laughs) Wonderful. So let's go back to the weather then since we talked a little bit about it. 300 days of uh, summer, 300 days of sunshine. Um, when is the best kind of time to get married and when are the when's the most surprising time to get married you mentioned December um, but maybe it's like spring really nice like early spring what would you recommend it can be so the best time in terms of not having any rain and being super safe and I'm talking Andalusia here because the Balearics Barcelona Madrid are very different Mm -hmm. but in the south here you can pretty much put away your coats and shoes, boots, uh, mid-May, put on your flip-flops and not have to wear barely even a cardigan or jumper until September. Amazing. That's that's the reality. But we do get a little bit of rain up to like 10th of um, 10th of June there's this saying in Spanish which says it's basically um, it in I won't say it in Spanish because I'll embarrass myself but what it's saying is <laughs> don't get rid of your jacket you know you're kind of over overcoat until the 40th day of May which is the 9th of June so yeah so the 9th of June is the day that we always say right okay after this day it shouldn't rain it shouldn't rain but it often stops raining before that you know like mid mid May And then I would say surprising times would be without any shadow of a doubt, like September's an incredible time to get married here, but 
October and November can be incredible too. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm not saying you can't get married in December or other months, but there's more chance of rain. That's the only thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. And also if you uh, capitalise on, on October, even early October, do you get low season rates for that as well, possibly oh, sometimes? Sometimes. <laughs> It depends on the venues because some of the venues just have a standard rate all year round, in, in mm-hmm. which case they're well priced anyway. Then you do have those those venues that are up and, and down in season. So it can make a difference. You know, definitely you have the benefits of more availability, perhaps. But that saying, you know, for us, October is a high is high season still for weddings until the end of October, really. May, June, July, August, September, October. That would be our six months of active weddings. Amazing. Okay, that's great to know. That's really, really good to know. So I'm going to ask you a question that you're not going to like because none of the planners like this. <laughs> um, but let's make a fake scenario. I'm engaged. We're all excited. Um, I have 50 guests and I want to get married in September. Um, what would you say is a ballpark for the budget that I should be looking at? I, I do this kind of a, a rough estimation because actually it's never really that far off. It depends on the venue, but I reckon around 25 to 30K is about. Okay. Estimate. Okay, great. So in the style of your weddings, if we, in the style of the, yeah. the sort of boho luxe style of weddings that you do, then around 30 is a good place to yeah, be. Yeah, around start. 30. And the way that I work it out is is with wedding planning fees kind of in my budgets that I send it's got the wedding planning fees in there so around 30 for a nice wedding I'm not saying like overly luxurious with like the world's most expensive flowers you know all that kind of stuff but to have a nice wedding yeah okay wonderful that's great that's great to know so let's stay with my fantasy wedding then I am marrying a Canadian let's do that today I'm marrying a Canadian I'm British we want to register to marry in Spain how easy is that process would you recommend doing it um is there anything that we need to know about doing it I recommend doing the paperwork in your own country and there are there are two reasons for that number one it's so much better for you to have the wedding paperwork in your own country so imagine for example that you lose your handbag with your wedding certificate in it and you need a new certificate but you got married in Spain now you have to contact Spain to get a new wedding certificate so it only makes sense to do the legal side at home to make your paperwork purposes in the future much more functional and easy the only way you can get legally married in Spain is if you live here for longer than six months or you get married in a Catholic church and you get approval from the archdiocese to get married here. Wow, that sounds like quite a few hoops and six months is a long time. That's a really long residency time. I think France is somewhat similar, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that's wow. I did not know that. Very interesting. Essentially, Um, you can't really do it unless you do a Catholic church. And then you have to be prepared for if you want an authentic location away from the Costa del Sol, for example, you know, you're going to struggle to find a priest that can speak English. Yeah, which is a big thing. Um, Yeah, and then if you have a translation, which is terrible because it stops things and Catholic Catholic ceremonies are long. They're like 45 minutes long. (laughs) So translating it in between would just make it even longer and no no you're right I think that <laughs> I think that you're you're on the money we should probably avoid the registration to marry but it is possible to do sort of yeah the other option is that you could get <clears throat> you could do a couple of days in Gibraltar get married in Jib so you've got your Gibraltarian wedding certificate it's pretty easy to organize mm-hmm. and then you can come to Spain and have your wedding celebration have a blessing like a, a symbolic ceremony mm-hmm. but the beauty and you know this the beauty of symbolic ceremonies is that they are all about you 
it's not about God. It's not about somebody else. It's not about rules or law. No, it's about you, your relationship, your love for each other, your family, and everything that you actually care about in your life. So I believe that there is no ceremony more beautiful than a ceremony that has been written specifically for you by a talented wedding celebrant, you know, an experienced wedding celebrant. I completely agree. So we're going to talk about places then, because one of the beauties of having a celebrant and one of the beauties of not registering to marry somewhere is that you don't need to be in any accredited building or any specific church. You can be wherever you want. You can be in any venue you want. And we love a good venue on this channel. So tell us some of your favorite venues. Well, where would you recommend that our audience check out? So I have three favorite venues and these have been kind of what actually can I have four is that too many yeah yeah no go for it (laughs) okay I've got four favorite venues and the way that these are favorite venues is that they have been loved and enjoyed and explored and just the most incredible experiences by our clients for the last seven years okay just a caveat there are other wonderful venues that I really love as well and I love the people that run them but these are my kind of like my four favorites so number one For those people wishing to fly into Malaga Airport and to not have too much of a big journey from the airport, I would recommend um, a venue that we work with very closely in Rhonda called Rhonda Mountain Resort. And it's in the middle of the mountains. It is a bit of a dirt track to get there. It's like 15 minute, 20 minute drive out of Rhonda. Everyone stays in Rhonda and then the couple and their families stay at the venue. But it is like laid back chilled back kind of vibe you know pool party the next day it's got a great expanse of spaces to do lots and lots of different things it's got like a weeping willow tree and then mountains behind and then views of Rhonda and the sunset so it is beautiful the next up I have a venue which was one of the first venues that we found seven years ago called Cortijo Fine Viejo and it is in Arcos in the south near to quite near to us 45 minutes from us and it is a beautiful old cortijo big amount of land but you've got courtyards you've got orange groves you've got these beautiful passageways that are um, adorned with gorgeous bougainvillea drooping down there is the world's biggest pool no it's, it's not the world's biggest but a massive pool and it's just one of these kind of classically beautiful white cortijos But the added bonus is that you've got also this open raw walls in parts of it, which is lovely. And it has a plan B, which is always a nice thing. Just in case. yeah. Just in case. So that is a place that we have enjoyed massively. So Fine Viejo, we love it. And then uh, closest to us is Casa La Siesta, which is a beautiful country house sandstone colored beautiful gardens two swimming pools sleeps around 22 people and the reason i love it so much is that it is five minute drive from a village called veja de la frontera which is a a pueblo blanco so these famous pueblo blancos so same as arcos but it's a little bit more kind of on trend and stylish you know and it is just the most incredible place my dad's lived there for 25 years and it's where jesus my partner in the business his father comes from there (laughs) Wow. So, so we love the hair it's like it's our soul home you know and we love sharing it with clients and we can do that via having people at Casa La Siesta and then the guests stay in this beautiful village with meandering little streets and up and down hills and beautiful views across to the Sierra de Cadiz which is like the mountain range of Cadiz and it's 11 kilometers from the beach so it's an absolutely perfect location. Wow, it has everything. It has the, the cute little town and the mountains and the beach. That sounds fabulous. It sounds incredible. What's yeah. your last one? The last one's Javier de San Rafael, which is, um, it's a bit of an island in the sense that it's n- it's not close to one of these cooler white villages so you go there is a real destination it's like right we're going to Hacienda San Rafael the guests can stay in Seville it's a 45 minute bus ride in but you can get I think these days around 45 to 48 people sleeping at that venue Mm -hmm. and it is one of these typical boho kind of luxe venues you know it's got um, two swimming pools it's got gorgeous olive grove for the for the dinner tables to be in it's just beautiful you know it's got the courtyard with the bougainvillea around and yeah it's stunning a typical Spanish yeah 
That sounds wonderful. It sounds really, really beautiful. And we will leave the links of those down below. And we'll show you some photos on the screen. I'm sure that everyone is drooling over them. I'm definitely drooling over them myself. Well, I want to thank you so much, Lucy, for coming on to the channel and talking us through how to get married in Spain. I learned a lot. There's lots of things that I didn't know about this. So this is fascinating. Where can people find you if they want to get married in Spain? So my web address is boutiqueweddingsinspain.com. Nice and easy. Uh, we are on Facebook, uh, The Boutique Wedco, and we are on Instagram, The Boutique Wedco as well. So Lovely. So we'll leave those links on the screen and we'll also leave them on the pinned comment at the top and we'll leave them in the description box down below. So I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for coming onto the channel. It's been a pleasure. And and everyone watching i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions then leave them in the comments below or head over to instagram to lucy's instagram and ask away i'll see you very soon take care bye bye, -bye.